When a fighter pilot is sent to intercept the target, it's not as easy as pointing the nose of the jet at the other aircraft. In most cases, a pilot can't even see the target that's being intercepted, and is completely reliant on sensors and radio instructions from a controller. There's a lot that can go wrong if you don't know what you're doing. But fighter pilots still manage to get there quickly, and they've been doing it for decades. Even when using a rudimentary radar display like this. So how do they do it? And how can you do the same in a sim like DCS? We'll answer both those questions in this video. When it's time to commit to an intercept, you want to be as efficient as possible with your flight plan. Not only is the available fuel a consideration, but the window for an intercept can be very short. This normally isn't a problem for a supersonic interceptor going after a slow-moving civilian plane. But what if the target is a supersonic attack plane? Having the interceptor point its nose at a fast-moving target might not work. This is called pure pursuit, and we talked about it in this video. Using pure pursuit, the interceptor would start to drift to the rear of the target aircraft, eventually settling in on its 6 o'clock directly behind the tail. If they're both moving at the same speed, then the interceptor would never catch up. So it makes this a pointless tactic in this case. But there is another option. And that's to point the nose at a spot ahead of the target where an intercept will happen in the future. When you do that, your intercept will look like this. Even if an interceptor can't fly faster than the target, it's still possible to catch the target using this geometry. Just bear in mind that without a significant speed advantage, the interceptor will have to start this type of intercept in the forward arc of the target. Otherwise, it runs into the same issue as a pure pursuit intercept. There are two ways to navigate to the intercept point. The first one involves math, but don't worry, it's not too difficult. For this, we need to figure out a couple angles first. The angle that the target is off the interceptor's nose is known as the antenna train angle. The name comes from it being the angle that the radar antenna in the fighter's nose needs to turn to face the target. Our second angle is the aspect angle, or AA. The aspect angle is how many degrees the interceptor is off the target's tail. So in this example, the interceptor has 150 degrees of aspect angle. So for our math problem, we're just going to subtract our aspect angle from 180 to find the number we're after which turns out to be 30 here. This final number is a special variant of antenna train angle known as the collision antenna train angle, or CATA. In this case, that angle is 30 degrees. All the interceptor has to do then is point the nose in front of the target until the radar blip is 30 degrees off to one side. Then an intercept is guaranteed. In our F5, that's as easy as turning until the radar return is right above the number 30. However, there are a couple caveats to this method. First, is this formula only works when the interceptor and target are flying at the same speed. If the target is flying at a slower speed, then the true intercept point will be between the calculated point and the target. Faster targets will have the true intercept point in front of the calculated point. Second, the formula only works when the interceptor is in the forward hemisphere of the target. Once you're at 90 AA, or anywhere in the rear half, the math will give you some strange and inaccurate results. Modern fighter jets often come with the feature that will calculate a collision course for the pilot, but not every jet has this. For those cases, there's another way to figure out CATA, and that involves using an interceptor's B-scope. When we talk about a B-scope, we're talking about how a radar displays its results to an operator. An A-scope shows range to a contact on the sideways scale like this. Each peak is a radar return, but this only shows range, not azimuth. A B-scope will show a top-down view that gives both range and azimuth. There are several other types of scopes, but the B-scope is the one that's going to help us out here. There's an unusual aspect to this display that we're going to take advantage of. Let me show you what I mean. Here we have three large aircraft flying line abreast towards our interceptor. You might expect that as they drift down the screen, they would fly right past and go out through the bottom of the display. 
but instead we see the outer two veer off near the end and exit through the sides. And it doesn't end there. Let's look at another scenario. These three planes are converging on our interceptor. But again, we see something odd. Instead of getting closer to each other in the display, they're moving down in a straight line. Even though they're on their way to cross right over the interceptor, they look like they're flying by on either side. This is not an oversight by the manufacturer. In fact, it's going to help us find the intercept course without having to resort to math. What's happening here is the radar returns are being stretched out. The actual radar waves themselves go out and come back inside this cone in front of the fighter. But the system stretches the cone out to cover a square shaped display. So the fighter isn't sitting at a single point here in the middle of the lower edge. The fighter is in fact the entire lower edge. This feature of the display brings with it a unique property. Anything traveling straight down is headed right at the fighter. But if it drifts off to the side, then it's not. Let's take a look at another scenario to get a better understanding of what's going on here. When you look out of a plane and see an object motionless on the canopy but growing larger, you can tell that a collision is imminent. This is sometimes called constant bearing decreasing range. It also works exactly the same with radar as it does with things you can see with your eyes. We're just taking advantage of this fact with our B-scope display. The B-scope format makes it really obvious when it's happening. And when you see constant bearing decreasing range happening on your radar screen, then you know you're on an intercept course. When we point the nose of the fighter at a target, we call it pure pursuit. But when we fly towards an intercept point, we're not pointing the nose directly at the target. Instead, we keep the target at a steady azimuth off of the nose as we close in. This is called proportional navigation, and it's an important concept to understand since it also applies to missiles in flight. Now let's take a look at how we can apply this knowledge in the cockpit. When a target is moving left or right on the display, then you know you are not on a collision course. This is just like if we saw it moving left or right on the canopy using our eyes. Since the intercept point is in front of the target, you'll need to start an intercept by moving the nose of the jet in front of the target. For a target moving right to left on the screen, you would want the center of the display to the left of the target. In other words, the radar blip needs to be on the right side. This might be confusing to remember at first. Just remember the target needs to be moving towards the center of the screen for this first step. If it's moving to the outer edge, then you turn the wrong way. Once you have the target on the correct half of the screen, it's time to start making corrections until we're on a collision course. The exact final angle will vary. Faster targets will need more angle than slower targets. This is because they'll be drifting more over time. As targets get closer to 90 degrees of aspect angle, they'll also need more lead. This part takes some experience to get right, but here are some things to watch for. If the target drifts towards the middle, then you need to adjust your collision point farther forward by moving your nose away from the target. But if your target is drifting towards the side, then you have too much angle and need to bring the nose closer. As you zero in on the correct angle, you should see less sideways drift. Eventually, you'll get to a point where the target is falling straight down the display. You can use these lines on the screen to help with keeping track of that too. Remember, the entire bottom of the screen is your fighter, so as long as the blip is going in that direction, you're headed for an intercept. Also keep in mind that the correct angle may not necessarily put the target right on one of these lines. It could be between them. What's important is that the drift is eliminated. There are a couple things to watch for that will indicate if an intercept might not be possible. If the target is drifting up, then you're not going fast enough. Also, if your collision angle is so high that it pushes the target off the side of the scope, then it's a good sign that the intercept won't happen. But as long as you see a target drifting steadily down on the scope, then you should expect to get close enough for a visual ID. Also, keep in mind that a target may maneuver. You can tell that's happening when you have a target that had previously been dropping down start to drift to either side. In this case, you have to change your heading until you see that steady drop again. So that was a lot of information. Let's do a quick recap. Proportional navigation is a more efficient way to intercept the target than pure pursuit. We can either use math or the radar's B-scope to figure out the correct collision course for proportional navigation. 
With the B-scope, the entire bottom of the display represents our plane. So as long as a contact is drifting down, we're on an intercept heading. We start the intercept by placing the radar contact on one half of the display so that it's drifting towards the center. Then we adjust course until it no longer drifts to the side and is only moving straight down. Now we don't want to just fly right into the target when we reach it. Our goal is to get into a good offensive position. This means ending up behind the target at the end of the intercept. To do that, we need to hook around behind it, and we do that using a baseline intercept. That'll be the topic of the next video, so I hope you'll come back for that one. Thanks for watching.